Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now if you're looking at buying a new or used processor you may have noticed that some have lower power counterparts. For example there's an i3-4130 and 4130T or i5-2400 and 2400S. The same goes with some AMD CPUs. The difference being that the models with an extra initial aside from Intel's K or X series of course are designed to use less power thanks to the lower TDPs and base clock speeds. The S series CPUs offer a little less performance for a lower power draw and the T series CPUs offer a lot less performance but even smaller power draw. But what sort of performance difference can you expect? If you bought and installed an S or T series Intel CPU somehow without realising, or you bought one because it was way less expensive than the price of a standard clock CPU, is the experience really that different? Well today we're going to find out and I've purchased the S and T variants of my i5-4460 to see just how they vary. So the standard i5-4460, the one that I use, is clocked at 3.2GHz, features 4 cores, 4 threads, which doesn't change across all variants, and has an 84W TDP. The 4460S is clocked at 2.9GHz, but matches the turbo speed at 3.4GHz, and features a 65W TDP. Last, and well, least on paper anyway, is the 4460T, a 1.9GHz 35W variant with a 2.7GHz turbo, intended for much lower power systems, likely in smaller enclosures too. So first up, we ran Cinebench R15, and with that, our standard i5-4460 scored 138 and 504. The S came in at 136, a very similar single score, and 471, whereas the T hit 113 and 359, a significant decrease when compared to even the S version. It's interesting to see those single core results not differ too much, though. The 4460 also rendered a 37 clip a little quicker too. A full HD 60fps file rendered at 31 seconds with the standard 4460, 32 seconds with the S and 39 with the T. So enough benchmark figures, let's check out some real world gaming performance too and see if these lower power processors would have any effect in games. Luckily the process was simple. Swap each CPU into my GTX 1060 build and run some modern games. So we tried GTA 5 first with the highest settings at 1080p of course. The gameplay you see here is from the regular 4460 but all results will be included along with the 1 and 0.1% lows at the end of each clip. Now of course performance will vary across all different low power CPUs like the i3s and the FX range from AMD but I chose the i5 because I already had the 4460 so it was pretty convenient. Plus there's an S and T version of that CPU. GTA 5 averaged 80 with the 4460, 76 with the S and 63 with the T. All playable results despite the differences. So we tried CSGO next but with the integrated graphics of each CPU instead. I had to record off screen because my recording software decided to stop working at this point but it comes back in the next game, trust me. The HD 4600 GPU is clocked at 350 megahertz on all of these processors so let's see what you could expect from gaming on the integrated graphics of each. This was at 720p lowest settings across all and the GPU usage sat at 99-100% to every time no matter the resolution either. The 4460 achieved 80 on average, the 4460S scored 75 and the 4460T hit 73 so really not much difference there. Finally we tried Hitman with the high settings. This game ran fairly well after we reinstalled the GTX 1060 of course with the 4460 averaging 72 followed closely by the 4460S at 69 and the 4460T at 53. A bigger difference at the bottom there but when it comes to that 4460S if you really wanted that lower TDP and power draw wanted to play games and for some reason it was retailing a lot cheaper then it wouldn't make much difference. Having said that the i5-4460T is probably best avoided by heavy users because you will see a difference and probably feel one too in those more intensive tasks but it's still certainly a capable i5 that's for sure despite the reduced clock speeds. So guys there we have it 
I hope you've enjoyed this video. I wanted to check this out because I've seen a lot of you uh, comment down below about your builds, wondering why perhaps the CPU isn't doing as well as you've seen in other benchmarks. And a lot of the time it turns out is because some of you guys are using the low power versions, um, like the i5-4460T. So hopefully this video will be helpful to you and you've enjoyed it. So if you have, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.